Five years ago, patient B had a cerebral hemorrhage and was transported by ambulance. They had surgery twice that year. Last year in June, they had stem cell therapy due to mobilization, and this year in August, they have scheduled their second stem cell treatment. About five years ago, my cloud turned bright red, and after undergoing surgery at the hospital, I woke up with half of my body feeling unnatural. The doctor reassured me that I would recover fine at that time, but despite undergoing rehabilitation, it didn't improve. So I found regenerative medicine on the internet and called here to receive intravenous drip. This individual is a woman in her 50s who experienced a cerebral cavernous malformation in her brain about five years ago. I have undergone surgery on two separate occasions, but currently the lesion has shifted to this particular side of my body. Despite the occurrence of paralysis in the aftermath, it was limited to the left hand and left leg. Through rehabilitation, she regained the ability to walk without a cane or any equipment, although her walking remains slightly unstable and requires careful attention. Although not to the extent of experiencing speech difficulties, there were occasions when I experienced a slight sensation of choking while speaking. Regarding the arm and hand, bending and stretching at the elbow are a bit difficult, and raising or lowering the arm or armpit is also a little challenging. I have difficulty putting strength into my little finger on my hand, so when trying to grab something, it feels like I can't squeeze it tightly. Let's examine the flow of regenerative therapy using stem cells. It begins with counseling by a specialist, followed by tests and blood collection for cell culture. The process involves stem cell collection, cultivation, and administration. Currently, there have been significant advancements in treating cerebral infarction, which makes up about 80% of strokes, with positive outcomes seen in therapies like TPA and endovascular treatment. In treating cerebral infarction, accounting for about 80% of strokes, favorable treatment outcomes have been reported for reperfusion therapies like TPA and endovascular treatment, indicating significant progress compared to the previous century. However, only a small proportion of patients with cerebral infarction can benefit from these advantages, as it is limited to a small percentage. In cases of cerebral hemorrhage, surgery primarily aimed at saving lives is performed in some cases based on the size of the bleed and clinical symptoms. The reality is that there is currently no effective treatment that leads to improvements in these cases. Therefore, I spoke with Dr. Tomokazu Maruo, a specialist in the Japanese Society of Neurosurgery, about the potential of regenerative medicine in neurosurgery. In stroke, damage occurs to nerves due to cerebral infarction or hemorrhage. In relation to nerves, there is a significant amount of research being conducted on cultivating stem cells to implant into nerves that are associated with patient deaths, and the available reports indicate that there is a certain degree of effectiveness 